I was planning to do something other than a vintage calculator video this time round, but due to unforeseen circumstances we're back with another 1970s electronic calculator. In this case it's a Frieden or Frieden 2002 printing calculator. Carl Frieden started designing mechanical calculators for Marchant, who he worked for until he started his own company in the early 1930s. Carl died in 1945, but the Fridden Calculating Machine Company carried on to make machines like the rather fantastic STW-10. Curious Mark has one of these, I'll put a link to one of his videos down in the description. Like many other calculator manufacturers, Fridden started making electronic calculators in the 1960s. In 1965 the Singer Sewing Machine Company bought Fridden and set up Singer Business Machines, hence the Singer name on my 2002. Not only making calculators, they also developed the System 10 computer. In the 1970s the calculator war was fierce and progress was rapid, and somewhere in the mid-70s Singer Fridden stopped making calculators altogether and the Singer Business Machines division was bought up by ICL. My Model 2002 calculator appears to have been made in 1975, so it had been among the last of the Fridden calculators. It was made in Japan for Singer Fritten, and from the look of the construction there was a bit of cost cutting going on. The 2002 does all the basic mathematical functions of add, subtract, multiply and divide, and it has the bonus features of a constant function, a percent key and two memories, and it has a 15 digit capacity before the register overflows. My machine is a 120 volt model, so I have to use a step down transformer to run it. I'll turn it on and you'll hear the Shinsu Saiki 102 printer start up and the power light comes on, but then the printer gradually slows to a stop. When I first got the machine I thought something had gone wrong, but it soon became apparent that this was deliberate, to either save noise or electricity. I'm not sure if this was a standard feature on all later versions of the printer, or whether it was something the American market demanded, but it's rather weird to use. As soon as you press a key the motor starts up again. To add numbers it's the fairly normal practice of entering each number and pressing the plus button to add it into the register. So I'll do the usual 1, 2, 3 plus 456 plus 789 plus 987 plus 654 plus 321 and one final plus to add that into the register. Then to see the total I can either press the subtotal or total keys. The subtotal leaves the number in the register ready for more calculations, whereas the total clears the register ready for the next set of figures. So there we have the total of 3330 and the register is now cleared. But you can still use that total. If I press any of the mathematical function keys it will add it straight back into the register. So I'll press plus and now I can subtract something from it. So I'll go for 1298 and press the minus key, followed by the subtotal key to give us the answer of 2032. That number remains in the register because I used the subtotal key, so I can now enter 2409 and press the minus key again, this time following that with the total key to give the answer of 377, printed in red to indicate that it's a minus value. Multiplication is pretty straightforward, and I can enter a string of numbers like 149.2 times 5 times 12.5 times 2, and finish off pressing the equals key, which is shared with the plus key, to give a total of 18,650. Division is much the same, so if I enter 7980 divided by 0.4, divided by 125, divided by 3.8, and then press the equals key, we get the answer of 42, of course. The percent key works in a reasonably normal way. Say I've just done some work for a customer and the bill comes to £1336.67 and I need to add 20% of tax to that before I submit my bill. Then I can enter my 1336.67, 
times 20 and percent, which shows the original price, the percentage and the tax of £267.33. Then all I need to do is press the plus key to add that to the original price, giving us the total of £1604. The same can be done for discounts. Say I've got a shop and I want to offer a 25% discount on an item that usually sells for £74.99. Then I can simply enter my 74.99 times 25% and press the minus key to show the new selling price of £56.24. I can also use the percent key to work out what percentage one number is in relation to another. Let's say I have a shop that sells art, but it also has a small cafe attached. Last year's turnover was £34,291, and I know from our records that the cafe's takings were £18,650. So what percentage of our turnover came from the cafe? Simple. Enter the 18650 divided by 34291 and the percent key to see that 54.39% of our turnover came from the cafe. The constant or k key allows us to repeatedly multiply or divide by the same number over and over again. So let's say I've got a list of prices, all including tax at 20%, and I need to relist them without the tax. First I'll latch down the k key and enter my first price of 49.99 divided by 1.2 and press equals to get the pre-tax price of £41.66. Now the divided by 1.2 is set as a constant. Bizarrely there's no indication of this on the printout, which seems a bit of an oversight. But anyway, I can now enter my next price of 22.50, followed by equals to show us the pre-tax price of £18.75. And I can repeat this for £12.49 and £6.99, giving us the results of £10.41 and £5.83 respectively. If I want to use another constant, I just have to enter my next calculation. I don't even have to unlatch and relatch the K key. We'll go for converting inches into millimetres. So I'll enter 25.4 times and then 12 inches and press equals to get the answer of 304.8 millimetres. And then I can enter 15 inches and press equals to get the answer of 381 millimetres and so on. So far I've had the decimal places set to 2, but using this wheel here I can set anywhere between 0 and 7 decimal places. There's also an adding machine mode where you don't have to enter the decimal. So for £12.99 I would just enter 1299 and hit plus. And you'll see that it's entered it with the point to separate the pennies from the pounds. I prefer entering the decimal myself, so I tend to leave my machines on 2 decimal places. There's also a floating point setting, so if I do the usual 355 divided by 113 and press equals, we get the result of 3.141592920353985398, which is of course an approximation of pi. Lastly, if I set it back to two decimal places, we've got the rounding switch here. Most of the time you'll leave that in the 5-4 position for standard rounding. But if I set it to the bottom position, it will round down only, and the upper position will always round up. So if I put it back to the middle position and try 3.7 divided by 1.9 equals, which to four decimals would give us 1.9474, and we get the answer of 1.95, as you'd expect. Now if I move the switch to the bottom position and repeat 3.7 divided by 1.9, we get the answer of 1.94, because it's rounded down. And if I move the switch to the top position and enter 4.5 divided by 2.1, which would give us the answer of 2.1429 with four decimals, this time we get the answer of 2.15, because it's been rounded up. As with most printing calculators, I can enter a reference number without adding it into our figures by pressing the subtotal key, which duplicates as the insert number key. 
So I'll enter 355113 and press the insert number key and it will print out with the hash symbol next to it to remind you that it's for reference only. The two memories work as you'd expect them to work with memory plus, memory minus, memory subtotal and memory total keys. I always prefer having buttons for each memory rather than, say, having to press a function button to select memory 2 or whatever. It just allows you to work faster that way. So, for a slightly over-the-top demo, let's say four friends have decided to invest all their savings together because they can get a better rate that way. For a duration of 10 years, at 3% APR, and they'll get charged 20% tax on any interest they make and we need to work out what they'll get back at the end. So we start off adding the amounts they're investing. Friend A is putting in £25,000. Friend B is putting in £43,800. Friend C is putting 52750 And Friend D is putting 36900 and press plus followed by the total key to show the amount invested of £158,450 and we'll add that into memory 1. Next we want to work out the compound interest so that's 1 plus the percentage expressed as a decimal that being 0 0.03 giving us 1.03 to the power of 10. So I'll enter 1.03 and press the times key 10 times. Then press the memory1 subtotal key to bring the amount invested and the equals key to give us the total of £212,943.55. Now we need to subtract the principal amount to find out how much interest they've received and then calculate the tax. So I'll press the plus key to add that last figure back into the register followed by the memory1 subtotal and the minus key to subtract that followed by the total key to give us the interest amount of £54,493.55 and now to calculate the tax so I can press the times key and 20% and the minus key to subtract the tax leaving us with £43,594.84 post tax interest so I'll press the plus key to put that back into the register, followed by the memory1 subtotal and the plus key to add that to the register, followed by the total key to show our post-tax grand total of £202,044.84. And I'll add that into memory2. Now I'm ready to distribute that to each investor. So. Friend A was £25,000 divided by memory1 subtotal times memory2 subtotal followed by equals to give his share at £31,878.33. Then I can quickly rattle through the other friend's amounts following the same procedure to calculate their totals. And what we're calculating here is the individual investment divided by the overall amount invested multiplied by the final post-tax value to find each friend's payout amount. And if we look at the printout we can see that friend A got £31,878.33 Friend B got £55,850.83. Friend C got £67,263.27. And Friend D got £47,052.41. And all that would have been quite quick if I hadn't have been explaining it as I went along. OK, that's enough demos. Time to take the covers off and have a look inside. When the calculator arrived, it was clear that someone had spilt their drink into it at some time in its history, because the insides were covered in a sticky gooey mess. So I removed, cleaned and serviced the printer before I even tried applying power to the machine. I gently cleaned the worst of the mess from the rest of the machine, but there are clear signs of corrosion on things like this connector for the printer. When I eventually tried the calculator out, apart from the initial surprise of the printer stopping turning when not in use, it worked. Well, it mostly worked, apart from two keys, the number four and the paper feed key, both kind of essential. 
Looking at the circuit board for the keyboard, there were some very corroded tracks, and after checking continuity, two were definitely broken, and a third was high resistance, so all three had to have wires soldered in to bridge the gaps. I was kind of surprised that the keyboard on this machine is the cheaper kind, where each key has a conductive rubber pad that squishes down onto pads on the PCB, rather than each key being a discrete electrical switch, as found in most of my vintage electronic calculators. But I guess by this time they were having to save costs wherever they could. The main circuit board is here, based around a single Commodore chip. I suspect these two modules contain the switching transistors that control the solenoids that trigger the printer hammers. Anyway, I think that will do for now. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and maybe even subscribe to the channel, not forgetting to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. That's it for now, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.